ever-changing, fast-paced world, the need for structure and routine in the lives of our youth grows greater each day. I'm Esther Bloom. How we can best serve our children in these challenging times is the focus of our program today. Joining us is Shelley Anguiano Figueroa, the Chief Executive Officer of the Boys and Girls Club in San Marcos. Welcome, Shelley. Well, Esther, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. When was the Boys and Girls Club in San Marcos founded? The Boys and Girls Club of San Marcos was founded in 1979 by a group of concerned citizens in the community. And now for 26 years, we've been going strong. What is your mission? Our mission is to inspire and enable all young people to realize their full potential as productive, caring citizens. And what is the composition of your membership? Oh, wow. We have about uh, close to 3,000 members uh, at six sites, and um, we have about 46% of them are Hispanic, 30% um, are Caucasian, and uh, the rest are a mix of other um, ethnicities. Well, what is the ratio of boys to girls? Actually, it's about 50-50, believe it or not. About 50-50. Oh, do you try to keep that balance? Um, we do. We do. We try and keep that balance. Um, you know, that daily interaction um, between girls and girls is great, and between boys and boys is great, but I think the interaction between the boys and girls um, is just as important. And we are a boys and girls club, after all. They weren't originally, though, were they? Esther, I'm really glad you asked that question because boys and girls clubs originally was Boys Clubs of America, and it wasn't until 1990 that they became Boys and Girls Club. So um, very proud to be a part of this organization and include girls also. And y you were saying earlier that, that you're going to be celebrating the number of years that? That's right. That, and that, how long is that? Um, 100 years. That'll be our centennial in April. We will um, be celebrating that. Uh, we currently serve about 4,000 youth um, across the country and on military bases internationally and um, we're proud to do so. Well, there's something to be very proud of. Uh, longevity is something you don't hear about these days. Right, right. How does one become a member? Well, it's actually very simple. Um, most Boys and Girls Clubs across the country have a membership application that you fill out. Um, very affordable membership fees. For example, Boys and Girls Club of San Marcos, it's only $40 for the entire year. And um, the kids can come and um, participate in our programs and activities um, as they see fit. They can come one day a week or two days a week or every day. <laughs> and you are an, a not-for-profit organization as well. We are. We're. So that must make it a problem getting funds. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. Okay. What sort of programs do you have? Uh, we've, we have a variety of programs. Um, there's actually five core areas that we focus in. Um, the arts, uh, character and leadership development, um, health and life skills, sports, fitness and recreation, and education. And um, as you could see, an array of those five core areas, we have a variety of activities from, you know, homework assistance. We have two full-size computer labs that have internet accessibility, dance programs, music programs. We have sport leagues. We have all kinds of things that uh, pretty much meet the needs of um, whatever six through 18 year old is looking for. Well, where do the uh, after school homework uh, arrangements set up? Where, where, do, where, where are they held? Well, at our main site, we have what we call the learning lab. And inside the learning lab, you will find um, a wide variety of books and encyclopedias and dictionaries and a couple computers. Um, and you also find a variety of things up on the walls that might help a child, you know, as far as their multiplication tables um, or whatnot. And in the learning lab, we have a dedicated staff member who assists the students and or, or the youth members with their, with their homework. And she does different things. So maybe they come Monday through Friday and every day they complete their homework. She gives them a little sticker and at the end of a certain amount of time, maybe two weeks, they get a pizza party. That sounds like fun. Yes, it is. And what about the computer lab? Well, the, the computer lab is probably actually one of our uh, most busiest areas, as you can imagine. Um, we're in a generation right now where we've got all these techie kids 
you know, a lot of them know a heck of a lot more than I do about computers and uh, computer, both computers lab and our both computer labs, sorry, in our teen center and in our elementary side of our facility, both are filled up daily. So in your arts and crafts, is there a staff member who is guiding them or are they left to their own devices? No, I, actually, I'm, I'm actually glad you asked that question because um, I think Boys and Girls Club prides itself on having that caring adult around so that when the youth attends, they feel that there's some comfort level in, in being there, that this person actually cares about them. Um, and it brings a different spirit to, to the organization. You mentioned something about uh, dancing and, and music. Do you work towards a show of some kind? Uh, we have all kinds of different performances. Um, for a lot of our donors and our board members, the youth will participate for them. Our Youth of the Year event, the youth participate. Our annual dinner, um, the youth participate mm -hmm. um, in that also. Dancing, singing, you name it. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do the activities vary for the teenagers? Well, obviously, if you know anything about teenagers, <laughs> we have to have things that we feel um, and in, from responses from them um, that are going to meet their needs. And a lot of things are similar, like the computer lab and homework assistance, but we also have things like a cafe that the teens run. Um, we try and set up an entrepreneurial program um, where they can actually work and earn, instead of earning money, they earn points, and maybe they earn points to go on a field trip or to a conference, a leadership conference. We also have a health and fitness center inside the teen center mm -hmm. and where the youth can participate, or the teens, I'm sorry, the teens can participate on a daily basis if they like to um, get in shape. So do you integrate the older kids with the younger ones or is it a separate kind of thing? Well, at our main site, which is about uh, the Jennifer Losher branch, which is 16,000 square feet, uh, the teen center is about 6,500 square feet of that. And we, uh, there would have to be special programs that would be occurring for the 13 year old, 13 to 18 year olds to come in and do maybe a mentoring program. You know, maybe they're gonna read with the kids one day um, or do a cooking project or something. But on a regular basis, they are separated. Well, I think that your, your basic idea sounds wonderful, but I'm curious as to how it can really work when you consider that you, you have a span of ages. Mm -hmm. we, like you're, what, at what age do they start in the young set? Well, they need to be six years old and in first grade. Um, and we do that because we have an open door policy uh, we're not a licensed daycare. We're open door to where, you know, latchkey kids, can, kids can come after school and participate in our activities. And I think that age of six and in first grade, they, there's an understanding of who their mom, who their dad, who their parent or guardian is, um, you know, that comes to pick them up. So it helps us, um, and it might sound funny, but not in their maturity level, they're six years old, isn't, they're not mature, but I think they're somewhat, for their age, they can, I don't know what I'm trying to say. So it goes six to what? <laughs> to what age? Six to 13 is on what we call the younger age side. And then 13, I'm sorry, six to 12 on the younger age side. And then 13 to 18 is for the teen center. And do the 13 year olds mingle well with the 18 year olds or is there a kind of the feeling of intrusion when they're with the older? Well, I, I think that um, there's probably a little both. <laughs> uh -huh. But I think that there's, um, there's respect from the younger kids and they look up to the kids maybe that are in the older, that are older, that are in high school, that are participating in the teen center. Um, we do have a variety of activities that some of them might focus on, you know, the 13 to 15 year olds and some activities might focus on 16 to 18 year olds. So we do do things in the teen center that separate, you know, by age. So what lessons do you think that they are learning that will pave the way towards successful ad adults? Well, as I stated our mission statement, Esther, um, we really want to inspire these kids to someday become productive 
caring, responsible citizens. Um, and that's our, the most important thing we do. Um, building character um, in everything that we do with them every day is probably the most important thing. Well, let's listen to what your branch director, Cara Alamo, and some of the students have to say. The Boys and Girls Club to me means hope and opportunity for kids who always, you know, they come to our club, they want to be something, they want to change their lives, and, and we're, we're here to do that for them. What I've discovered about myself ever since I've been at the Boys and Girls Club was that I actually want to go to college and I want to make something better out of myself because I see staff here that, like, want to help kids and I want to do something along that line. My favorite thing at the Boys and Girls Club of San Marcos is to go in the dance room. I like the dance room. I like to go to the dance room because I like to make up dances and I'm a good dancer. I want to have a better life. Like, I don't want to be like one of those people like, that goes like, to jail or in and out of jail. I want to like, stop like, crime in the community. There's no question how what you offer is changing lives. Do you ever hear from those who have passed through your doors? All the time, Esther. And that makes it so much better you know, for what we're doing every day. We have a, a local college, Palomar College, and a local university, Cal State San Marcos, right, knocking on our either door. And um, you know, after these kids grow up and they go to either of those colleges, they always come back and they want to get a part-time job. And it's a great thing to see them want to come in and give back. And some of them, it's not even working. It might be volunteering back at the club. That's so rewarding yes. because most of the time, if you do a mentoring kind of job with people, you rarely know if it has made a difference in their outlook and their attitude towards life. And it, it must be fun to hear from them again. It absolutely is. You had mentioned earlier that you have five other sites. Yes. Now, how did you come up with that idea, and, and how did you choose? Well, San Marcos is a, a growing community, um, and we're just located, the Jennifer Losher branch is located in just one spot of, the, of that city. So we've been able to expand on some of the school campuses. We're on two middle school campuses, two elementary school campuses, and we just opened one in an affordable housing unit also. Do these people make requests for it, or how do you determine what is a, a good location? We should do. We usually look at the feasibility of the area, uh, what the need is of the community, and, um, and go from there. Well, do, do these, uh, would you call them satellites? Yes, extension sites. Extension sites. Do they offer the same activity that the main campus does? They do. I mean, the, the foundation of the programs that we offer, absolutely, but they may differ very um, among each site depending on, again, what the need is of those youth and those families. And what benefits do these schools derive from that? Oh, well, tremendous benefit on the school campuses because, as you know, there's been a huge accountability put on the schools to um, increase the, the mathematic and the reading component of students. And I think that having that homework assistance and or tutorial after school in which we do offer on those campuses um, has been a great asset to the schools. We've got uh, a lot of teachers. Some are being paid by the school to stay an extra hour. Some are volunteering after school. Um, and I think it's been a great collaboration between us and the San Marcos Unified School District. Well, we can get some feedback from Brian Randall, who is the principal of the San Marcos Middle School. Excellent. Uh, there's a saying that it, uh, it takes a village to raise a child. And, uh, and in that village, you have the, the families and the elders and the children all working together as one, one unit to bring up that child. And here in San Marcos, we're very fortunate because our village consists of our local parents and the local business community, and San Marcos Boys and Girls Club being part of that community, it's a very important piece to, to bring all, all the parties together to raise that child. And here at the school, we're very fortunate because we're able to have the Boys and Girls Club right at our site, and they are um, with us for, in many different aspects. Uh, one is that they work with us in an after-school academy in which our students receive additional help on homework and, uh, and tutorials on their classwork that they receive during the day. Uh, secondly, they have the traditional Boys and Girls Club program, which they offer their 
uh, curriculum on uh, character education and drug awareness uh, along with their activities that they do with the students. And it's, uh, it's part of the critical hours program that is very important, especially in our community, that uh, keeps our children busy during the time frame where so many youth can end up uh, being misled and, and out in the streets uh, doing things that uh, they might not be making the best choices, but the Boys and Girls Club are here to able, they're, they're able to give them the guidance to make those better choices. What a wonderful testimonial to the value of your programs. It should encourage you to go on and on. Thank you, Esther. What is your greatest need? Our greatest need? Well, as a nonprofit organization, it's uh, funding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it takes about uh, $1.3 million a year to operate all six of our sites. Where do you get your basic funding from? Um, we have, uh, we're about 40% grants, 30% uh, come from special events, uh, about 15 to 20 come from the immediate local community, and then membership fee um, is really low, it's you know under 8%, so um, that's about the bulk of our revenue. Oh, well, it, I gather from what you say that the community is very supportive. Very supportive. I'd like to think of us as the uh, choice charity in the community of San Marcos. Yes. Well, you very well deserved. Thank you. And what are your plans for the future, though? Well, San Marcos is a very, like I said before, it's a very growing city. Um, we have a great board of directors that has great vision, and we want to keep up with that growth. So we're looking at a variety of things, um, you know, on the other, on the west side of the city, quite possibly, because we're on the east side, uh, to build a, another facility. Um, basically, we're going to look at uh, a variety of different things and base it on what the need of the community is. That building that you're in now mm -hmm. has a marvelous address, positive place. Yes. Was that done deliberately? Absolutely. <laughs> the motto for Boys and Girls Clubs of America, all the Boys and Girls Clubs across the country and on international military bases is the positive place for kids. And obviously they feel that way. Yes, they that's keep, the intent. They keep coming. <laughs> so what is a child's commitment to the uh, organization? I mean, when they sign up, are they committed in terms of time? Uh, no, they're not. Um, they come at their own will and they can come one day out of the entire year or they can come every day out of the entire year. I like to think that when a child signs up, the commitment relies is, is upon us as the organization, as the board, as the staff. We've got a commitment to that child um, to make them realize whatever their potential may be to, to become productive citizens back in the community. So I think it's kind of verse, reversed what you, what you asked. Well, what is a typical routine? I mean, if a child comes in after school, do they go in and just hang out? Or is there a particular routine that is established? Right. Sometimes kids come in and they just hang out, but um, you won't fe see a lot of hanging out in our facility because we have so many things going on. So when a youth member registers and completes the membership application, they get a membership card. And, you know, just as if you were going to go to a health and fitness club and swipe your card as you came in, that's what our youth members do. They swipe their card, they come in, and they actually have a choice. They have a choice if they're going to go to the art room or they're going to go to the computer lab or they're going to go to the games room and participate in a program or activity. If they want to just go outside and hang out with their friends, they can do that also. But I would imagine that everything's more or less supervised so that you don't have a disciplinary problem. Absolutely, and I like to think of we have structure within our walls. Um, our ratio at all of our sites is 20 to 1. That means 20 youth, for every 20 youth there is one staff member. And if the computer lab is open, there's a staff member in there. If the arts and crafts room is open, there's a staff member in there. So there's constantly activities and programs going on for the youth to participate on. We participate in, we just give them that choice. Well, how do the teenagers react to the discipline of having to sign in and be counted? Well, I, you know, I think that everybody wants to belong to something. And I think, especially at that teenage years where they're searching for their independence, um, you know, they have that membership card, 
for the teen center um, and a lot of them are excited to come and and show that that membership card that they belong there and I think they a lot of them take pride in that so do you use the fact that they have to register when, when they come in each time as a support for what you count as the, the number of, of people, young people that you serve? Yes, yeah, so what we refer to as registration would just be a one-time thing. They register for membership for the year. As they come on a daily basis, um, we, we count that as checking in. So they would come in and they would check in, and that helps us really to know, you know, how many participants did we have that day? Um, because we're a nonprofit, um, people are always wanting to know numbers, you know, and, and, and whatnot. So it's important that we know how many kids are entering the building and, um, and who's come through the door, too. You know, we might have a parent call and say, you know, did Johnny show up today? And we can easily look in our database mm -hmm. and say, yes, Johnny, Johnny's here. Well, it sounds like a very safe, protective place to be in. Yes, and I'm glad you said that, too, because that's uh, probably the key to what we encompass, too, at the Boys and Girls Club, is that we are the safe place to be. You know, we're the positive place, but we're also safe. Um, we want a supervised and safe environment for all the kids to be in. And I tell my staff all the time, if we don't have safety and supervision, um, nothing else matters. We have to have that first. Well, it must be a credit to you, though, to think that you have some uh, mark in preventing the kind of crime that happens when kids don't have anything to do. And, and, and it may start out as a mischievous kind of thing, but grow into something that can get them into juvenile hall. Yes. And uh, there's a question that actually stems from Boys and Girls Club and some of our, our marketing. And we ask, what is the most crucial time in the life of a child? And a lot of people, and you might be thinking this yourself, hmm, is it when they're a teenager or is it when they're, you know, in middle school? Well, actually, it's every day between 3 and 8 p.m. What is between 3 and 8 p.m.? It's when the school bell rings and when their parents come home from work. Yeah, so many latchkey kids yes, today. Yes, yes, and those are a lot of the kids that we're serving. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we give those kids the opportunity to have a safe, supervised, mm -hmm. fun place to go after school from that period of time when they get out of school and when their parents get home. And with wonderful character building besides, and I'm, I'm sure that you teach leadership skills so that when they leave, they feel 10 feet tall. Yes. We always, um, part of our core beliefs, uh, we have something that's called the youth development strategy. And we always want to be sure that we're providing for the kids a sense of belonging, a sense of usefulness, a sense of influence, and a sense of competence. And if we can do, you know, building the character and do that as they come through the door, um, we're going to turn around and we're, we are going to reach our mission of um, building these responsible, caring citizens. Well, we only have a few minutes left, but I know that you speak from the heart, but I wonder what drew you to be working at the Boys and Girls Club? Well, I was uh, uh, fortunate enough to hear about boys clubs um, growing up. My father was um, grew up in the Boys Club of Oceanside, and um, both of his, his parents were from Mexico. His first language was Spanish, and uh, what helped him through his school age years was participating in the Boys Club of Oceanside. And, uh, you know, after having four children, including myself, uh, my father always talked about how the Boys Club of Oceanside saved his life, how it changed his life and made the greatest impact on him. And it always kind of stuck with me. And uh, so I found myself back in working with Boys and Girls Clubs. Um, so it is a little bit deep it is a little bit more of a deep passion for me um, and relates back to my father. <laughs> yeah, well, the, it just goes to show you the, the strength of influence yes. that a, another person, another caring adult can have on some child who perhaps has no direction yes. 
and really needs that. Yes. And, and that, I think, is so remarkable. Yes. In choosing your staff, do you look for particular qualities? Absolutely. We, we look for passion. I mean, do you have passion to be, to be around kids? Um, you know, we have a, a staff of, of over 50 employees, and only nine of them are full-time. The rest are part-time. And like I would said before, a lot of them come from the community college or the university and are working part-time. Some of them want to become teachers. Some of them ha are going to have nothing to do with kids. But there's some, we look for some passion because I think everybody, and hopefully everybody in their life at some point, has had a caring adult uh, cross their path and make an influence or impact on them. And we really look for that in the staff members that they have because it's as easy as you coming into the club and us saying, hi Esther, how was school? How was your day? What are you gonna do today? It's that little, that little hint of we care about you. Yes, I, I can see that. I can hear it in, in <laughs> what you say. I can feel it in the passion that you have for what you do. And you are really making such an enormous difference in the lives of the children who pass through your doors. Thank you so much, Shelley, for taking time out of your very busy day. Thank you, Esther, us. for having me and, and listening to the story of the Boys and Girls Club of San Marcos.